Hello, welcome back. So in the last video, we covered the basic concept of an if statement. The next thing to know about if statements is that they are usually accompanied by else statements. So as per your RPA experience, uh, we would know that usually we will check if a certain condition is true. If it, it is not, then we do something else. So the code looks something like this. It recognizes if and checks the expression, else do something. So notice that else does not come with an expression. As long as if is not true, or rather if the expression inside the if statement is false, just do the statement inside the else section. So let's take a look at uh, something more visual. So Let's say we have an if statement and an expression. So this expression will control whether statement 1 and statement 2 are run. Do note that indentations control the number of lines that are run. You will notice that statement 1 and statement 2 run only because they are the same line. They are on the same line. They are all one tap away or four spaces away from the left margin. If the expression is true, run statement 1 and 2. If expression evaluates to false or not true, then go into the else section. If there is both an if and else statement, then you can only run one of the two. Meaning, either statement 1 and 2 run or statement 3 run. There must be exactly one option that is chosen. There is no such thing as we don't we run neither or we run both. So in other words, either statement one and two run or statement three run. Those are the only two options that are available. Statement four runs regardless of whether if is true or not, whether statement one, statement two, or statement three run, statement four will always run. So let's take a look at the code for this. So if let's say we have a situation where score is equal to 80, if score is more than equal to 80, then you print A grade. Now here we have this new keyword, which is the else. If it is not A, then print not A. And finally, print your score is and whatever value is stored inside score. So when does the program print A grade? It's when score is more than equal to 80. When does it print not A? Whenever score is not more than equal to 80. And when does the last line print? The last line always prints. The last line always prints. Let's look at a different permutation. Now we add one more component. So after checking the if statement, we can check L if. L if refers to else if. Then check this and finally containing the else. So how does this work? Visually, if expression 1 is true, then statement 1 and 2 run. If expression 1 is not true, then check expression 2. If expression 2 is true, run expression, run statement 3. Otherwise, run statement 4. So if we convert this into our original question or problem where we wanted to assign a grade to a student based on a score, if score is more than or equal to 80, then we print A grade. Else if, so now we know that, hey, your score is already less than 80. Yeah? If your score is less than 80, then check if it's more than 70. If it's more than 70, print B grade, else print C grade. So that's how uh, it works. And out of the three groups of colors, as per previous, only one out of the three set of colors can run. Let's take a look at a real example. So let's go to Jupyter Notebook for this. So we see here, if we assign the value of 80 to the score, 
So therefore, if score is more than equal to 80, print A grade, else you print not A. So we have gone through this already. Next one, if your score is 90, and here now we have this new component called else if. So first we check, this is expression 1, is score more than equal to 80, if it is, print A grade. If it is not, then do the second check. Else if score is more than equal to 17, 70, print B grade, else print C grade. So by changing the value of score, we see that we get different outcomes. If score is 80, we see A grade. If score is 60, then C grade. So that brings us to the end of this example on student scores. So just to recap, we have gone through what E statements are, what else if statements are, and finally else. So those three concepts should be clear by now. So we have also seen the code for this. And in the next lesson, we will go into the next concept, which is what we call a nested E.